focus song without music, so let's give it a try. Huh? Yeah, take me out to the party, because we're having a block party out here. <laughs> or somebody told me. <laughs> yes. All right, so take me out to the party, take me out to the fun, puppets and music guarantee, even find my school supply needs, bring a friend and play on the swing set. School seems so far away and it's food, friends, Fun all day long at the block party. Take me out to the party. Take me out to the fun. Keep clapping, Ruth. Puppets and music guaranteed. Even find my school supply needs. Bring a friend and play on the swing sets. School seems so far away. And it's food, friends, fun all day long at the block party. Our Lord, we are bemused with you. You create messes for us to get into and to deal with and to enjoy and to struggle with. Lord, you have brought upon us this block party today. And so we're going to trust you that you're going to make it run and that you're going to make it successful and that you're going to make it all that you will have it to be. And in better preparation for that block party, Lord, you have called us here to be in this sanctuary to worship you, to lift praise to you, to call your name, to pray before you, to, to figuratively and be on our knees in, in a posture of prayer. Lord, we do all of those things today. This is your real estate, Lord. Not only the tangible real estate, but the real estate of our hearts. We offer all of this to you, that you bless it, that you redirect us, that you pivot us, that you lift us up and, and exalt us because you have promised to do so. Lord, we are here in response to your call to serve the community, to make disciples, and to obey everything that you have taught. We seek to do that today. Enable us to do so, we pray in your most exalted name. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Willow Creek this morning. It is indeed Block Party Sunday. Yay, Yay is right. Yay is right. There will be no coffee hour this morning, so that as soon as church service is over, we can get right to set up and get things done and get ready for our guests who are coming. Um, before I open with prayer, I would like to say as the head trustee a huge, huge thank you um, everyone who came yesterday and worked outside in the Valley Retreat, uh, I, I could name you all, but you know who you are. Um, so everybody who put in countless time yesterday in the Valley Retreat, um, hours of sweat equity, if we were building a, a house for ha habitat, that's what they would be called, the sweat equity hours. Um, so you're all part owners of this property, and that makes you all part responsible for how today goes, Okay. So positive attitudes, happy smiling faces, 
Look at Vicky. <laughs> and we're going to have a successful block party. We're ready for, we're, we, um, we, we're putting on the Ritz. We're ready for the visitors to come, right? All right. Will you bow with me in prayer this morning? Our gracious God and Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that you would bless every aspect of this day. From this service, the music, pastor's words and message, to the block party and the events that follow afterwards, Lord, to the little kids who go home and ask their parents, what did that mean? When that song played, or when that puppet show showed this, or when that person said that, what did that mean? Who is God? We pray that you would give those parents the answers, Lord, or the wisdom to seek the answers so that they could raise their children with the knowledge of you and a knowledge of eternity. That is what today is about for us, Lord, and we pray that we are doing your work and your will in doing so. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And at this time, I invite Peggy to come forward. She has a few words regarding the block party. It's here, kids. I vote that we uh, change our theme song today from uh, Take Me Out to the Party to Let's Get It Started. Let's Get It Started. Come on. That deserves more of a laugh than that. Who I would let like the to dogs think. out. Pardon me. Who let the <laughs> dogs out? Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Who, who, who? Ain't nobody got time for that. I, I would like to thank everyone who has helped uh, with with getting ready for the block party. Um, um, many of you have put in long hours, not just yesterday, but over several months now, and uh, you know it is. It is because of your time that you've put in and your efforts and your donations and your, here's 20 bucks, use it however you want to do it. Uh, it's making this thing fly. So I appreciate it. I would especially like, if you've been on the block party team, if you'd stand and we'll just give you a round of applause. These, these folks have gone above and beyond. They really have. And uh, in terms of effort. So um, I, w I would like to... to uh, uh, give one small special recognition. Uh, I asked that they make some outdoor games to play because I just thought it would be a fun idea. And I gave them uh, minimal direction and, and minimal materials. But uh, in terms of above and beyond, we now have a, a full set of outside dominoes. And, and you can come and play tic-tac-toe. And you can come and play checkers. And I don't even know what else. But Pardon me? Disc golf, disc golf. So uh, we're, we're going to have a great time this afternoon. If you haven't heard already, uh, I think you've got a, a thing in your bulletin. It lists all the people who've contributed. It lists uh, what the entertainment's going to be. And we are just going to have uh, a, great, a great time. So um, if you haven't signed up to volunteer, just come and, and spend time and, and see what's going on. Because I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, at last count, I think we are now up to... 35 backpacks with supplies that are ready to go, uh, 117 pairs of shoes, 117 packages of socks, um, assorted stuffed animals that we're going to give away, and lots of clothes that we're just going to put out, and if somebody needs them, they can take them. So um, just, just a lot of stuff that we have gathered uh, through your help, uh, through Albright Church helped us, uh, Granger Good Shepherd, and just some random people said, hey, oh, you're doing what? Well, here, here's 20 bucks, do it. So uh, I thank you all. Our neighborhood school fund, I think, is up to about 900 bucks now. I'm not really sure. Uh, we do have two fundraisers that, that we're still, uh, that one's coming up. Our uh, give back night at Portillo's is this Thursday from 5 to 8. If you go and buy dinner there, a portion of that will go toward the neighborhood school fund. And then we are still selling mums through the end of this month. And, and the proceeds from that also will go to the Neighborhood School Fund. So I thank you all. And uh, let's have a word of prayer over the block party. Lord, just thank you so much for the efforts and for your guidance in all this uh, time and the efforts that we've put in. Um, thank, you for, thank you for this outreach opportunity, Lord, to our local community here, that we can show your radical hospitality, that we can um, 
give a small piece of your extravagant generosity to us. Um, thank you for all that you've given us, um, and thank you for the beautiful day you've blessed us with for this event, and, and we just give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Amen. So if you're at home watching via Facebook and you don't know what to do with your Sunday afternoon, hey, come on out and um, strike up a conversation with us. Good morning to you. As Peggy settles in to her piano over here, I would like to introduce this song that we are going to sing by saying, in my sermon today, or message... Solomon asks for wisdom, and so I ask, for what would you ask if you had the opportunity and to know that God would deliver it? I suggest that what we ask and what we seek is that for Christ to be our vision, our vision in our hearts, our vision in how we deal with others, our vision, our example of how we get along in this world. Why don't we stand and why don't we commit ourselves to it? scripture today, King Solomon refers to himself as servant of the Lord four times. And so when Ruth reads that scripture, I want you to pay attention and I want you to count the times that she reports what Solomon says, just to make sure that Mike can count, okay? 
I want you to count them. But if he carries himself that much as being a servant of the Lord, also shouldn't we. Let us sing, make me a servant. That's a lot of humility to put out there. Lord, make me a servant today. You never know what you'll get yourself into when you do that. But you know, this song that we sing, angels bow before him. Well, if angels are going to bow before him, then for sure, that's a God that is willing to take us on as servants and is worthy of our service. What a mighty God we serve. Let's sing it. That song sounds like a Vacation Bible School song. And you can count today as a Vacation Bible School day for you. Hey, in, at about 10 o'clock Eastern Time, it will be August 16 in Sydney, Australia. Yes, and so I begin recognition of my birthday you know, August 16th, Sydney, Australia time, and I conclude it with Pacific time over in, so it's a, it's a long birthday that I have that we can all celebrate. Peggy, while you're there with that song, you know, it was Molly's birthday, and it was a twin's birthday, and my birthday, and when's yours the 19th? Yours is Thursday. Did I miss anybody? Who else this month? Huh? Dean, Dean, let us, let's all sing happy birthday to us August folk, okay? And that goes for you at home as well. And if you're missing out on somebody singing happy birthday to you, whatever month it is, you just come on down here to Mishawaka Willow Creek United Methodist Church, and we will sing to you. The other thing that I wanted to say regarding celebrations today is we concluded our uh, Hebrews Bible study this last Wednesday, and I gave out these um, certificates to people that participated. Um, Peggy got one, Shelly got one, 
And today I'm going to walk this one back to Wayne. It says, Biblical Scholar Recognition, Pastor Mike Settles acknowledges Wayne Lavengood has attended and participated in the Hebrews Bible study. And so, uh, Peggy, play a short little number while I walk this back to Wayne. That was pretty quick of Peggy, don't you think? Folks in here at home, you get to cel be celebrated. And I like to do that as often as I possibly can for, for just anything. If you pick up, you know, a piece of clutter that's on a sidewalk someplace, <laughs> I want to celebrate you for that. It just doesn't matter what it is. We want to celebrate each other. What celebrations do you folk have? Well, what... what um, things are you thankful for? I have two. Today is my dad's birthday. His official, actual birthday. Uh, what, a, what's his name? Sydney time. What's his name? His name is Larry. His name is Saint Larry in my book, if you ask for Roy's book. Um, and then the second thing I want to celebrate is I want to thank everybody for their prayers for Becky, um, Roy and I's uh, daughter-in-law, I'll just call her that. Um, her test results from her lymph nodes were good. Um, they were able to remove all of her cancer with the surgery, and she won't have any more cancer, or any more surgeries, rather. And um, she has a follow-up visit in six months to see if they're going to take in any chemo or radiation, but right now she's not. We're praying for Becky, and we're celebrating that things are good for the moment. And yes. Happy birthday, Larry. I think Larry raised a wonderful daughter, don't you all think so? He raised three of them, and one wonderful son. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, it's, it's hard for some people to just take, like, a, a good thing. Yeah, you know, it's like trying to pass it on to somebody else. Hey. Uh, the other celebration, I would say, is the block party, back to school block party. Yeah, like Ruth, like Peggy, great job, okay? Um, and uh, the re yes, yes, for sure. Very good. For those of you that are at home, uh, we're celebrating that George, he was having some serious eye problems, but uh, that seems to be on the mend in a dramatically wonderful way. And then their home situations with electricity is uh, improved and continues to improve. And we pray that for those of you that are at home that may have uh, electrical difficulties, we're praying for you. You know, I remember when I was a kid, because I love storms, rain, thunderstorms, overcast, you know, and when a storm would start to come up, I would be excited. My grandmother would say, Mikey, what's wrong with you? Um, because what she knew and what she had experienced was, you know, very often when these things happen, there's uh, uh, um, problems that occur, you know, uh, People's homes get messed up, trees fall, electrical power. And so that's what she was saying. 
And so the things that we have to be grateful for, all of these celebrations, all of these things that we in our hearts are thankful for, and for you at home that have many things that you are thankful for, I invite us to stand today and let us sing that we are thankful. be seated and I'm going to ask you for prayer requests now and I want you to be reminded like I like to remind you every now and then the word amen means so be it now what that means is amen is not the end of the prayer the amen part is the beginning of the partnership of action between our part and God's part to making that prayer happen so what do you have to pray about Georgia. How old is he? Well, 14. My goodness, he looks like he's 19. We'll pray for him. Haley. What's Liz's last name? Okay. okay. Um, automobile accident. And, um, and Haley's going to the funeral uh, Thursday evening. And so uh, as I was having the discussion with her, you know, the, this friend was 21 years old and passed away. And then, you know, uh, Haley is young too. And so having to deal with that at such a young age is very, very difficult. And so not only do we pray for the family, uh, but we pray for the friends around the family uh, that they are encouraged and that God's peace be with them. Uh, yeah, that funeral is um, Thursday. And so... Take a moment each day of the week to pray, all right? So. Pastor, um, there's a lady we dearly friends with, and I don't know her last name, but I was um, checking out of the grocery store, and she rolled up in a new car to me, and she could tell she was um, playing chess, and um, I had my cup in the dump, and I said, may I do a little bit of heart control? God bless you. Then she dropped something in the grocery store on me and picked that up, and she dropped something else. Yeah. Yeah. So I said, Well, then give me your name so I can pray for you and one of my friends. So her name is Mary Francis, and she's a beautiful lady. And I just said, People should be more kind to each other. And I said, Thank you for your prayers, and I pray for you. So that was just a beautiful, beautiful thing to have happen. So thank you, Lord, for that name. We will pray. Um, last. I forgot what day it was. My wife, Sherry, and I were eating at Martin's with her sister, Sandy, and we were in line, and it was an awkward line because of the way they had things set up, and so it was hard to know where the end of the line was. But, and so there was this other woman that thought she was in line, but that wasn't really the line. But So anyway, I looked at her, and I said, yeah, go ahead, okay? You know, and she said, Are you sure? You're really next. I said, ah, go ahead, okay? And so um, uh, she did that. And so then when we got up and I was set to pay for our stuff, <laughs> the previous woman left a 20 that covered all but $2 of it. And so um, 
you just never know when somebody's just itching to, to you know, show a good deed to you or, you know, ask for prayer or something. And so just uh, be friendly, I guess. What else you want to pray for, Vicky? The safety of everyone involved today. The safety of everybody involved today. Block party. Again, if you're at home and you don't know what to do with your Sunday afternoon, Mishawaka Willow Creek United Methodist Church here at the corner of Jefferson Boulevard and Capitol Boulevard from 1 to 5. Come on out. Have a hot dog. Have a sloppy joe. Anything else? Wayne. We'll be looking for Let's pray. Lord, we remember who you are. We remember that the angels cover their eyes when they are in your presence. We remember that it is a mighty God that we serve, not a wimpy one. We remember, Lord, how Job spoke to you and confessed, Who am I? Who am I to know the lofty things that you do say in our Lord? And we come to you in praise, Lord. We know who and where we are in your sight. It is because of Jesus Christ that we in your sight are redeemable, and lovable and exaltable we are loved and because we are loved Lord we have this confidence to come before you to pray for the family of Liz that you would comfort them pray for the friends that you would place your presence within them stir them with love Lord comfort them as only you can Lord, we cannot make sense of the things that happen in this world. And we ask, Lord, not that you reveal the sense of it, but that you comfort us. You have promised us, Lord, that in sticking close to Jesus, we will all see each other again. We are comforted by that and we hang on to that. But in the meantime, Lord, we cry, we grieve. We continue to grieve the loss of our loved ones. Lord, grace us yet all the more that you walk through that valley with us. Sometimes you hold our hand and sometimes, Lord, you do in fact carry us. And so, Lord, carry us and embrace us and whisper into our ears, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. For, Lord, we cry. We cry in our anguish, and we cry like babies that have been disappointed and hurt and harmed. Lord, whisper to us, it's okay. Embrace us. Embrace us, Lord. For those of us that suffer cancer, that are recovering from cancer, that are anticipating cancer, Lord, We are only human, and you know that we are only human. You know how you made us out of the dust of the ground, and we remain the dust of the ground without your breath of life within us. And so, Lord, continue to breathe that breath of life within us. Continue to to comfort us. Continue to heal us, Lord. Continue to make us successful in all ways that you would have us to be successful for your name's sake, for your glory. For your glory, Lord, heal these people that they can be about doing the works for which you have created them and brought them up. Lord, we pray for all of those that were mentioned this morning, and they represent so very, very many others that were not mentioned. And Lord, we know that you love them all. You would not be the holy God that you are if you did not love them all. And so, Lord, on your behalf... On your behalf, Lord, 
Your servants here in this sanctuary lift the names, the unknown names, the unspoken names of all of those that you love, and we knock on your heavenly door, and we knock on your heart, and we say, Lord, Lord, throw out your blessings all the more. Throw out your healing all the more. Heal these people. Comfort these people. Protect these people. Protect these people that are in uniform protecting us. Lord, we ask this moment that you humble our hearts yet all the more, and it is only your power that we can do so, Lord, for we are a people that are proud, and we are a people that think we know what we're doing, and we are a people that are easily harmed. Lord, throw your grace upon us and force it into us. Our willingness is to respond to you, Lord. And we respond to you in all that we think and say and do this morning. Lord, humble us. Humble us enough that we know within ourselves that it is not our will that we seek. Indeed, it is your will that we seek because we have learned to trust you. And so, Lord, with the fullest of confidence, with the fullest of trust, with the fullest of meaning, we pray how you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I'm going to bring Ruth back up here with that booming, beautiful voice that she has to read beautiful scripture for us today. I'm a little bit dizzy, so if I lose my place, bear with me. But I'm excited because our scripture today comes from the Old Testament. I like Old Testament scripture. The Old Testament gets forgotten all the time. So I'm really excited that pastor's preaching out of it today. Everybody thinks the Old Testament doesn't apply anymore. That all that applies is after Jesus in the New Testament. But the Old Testament still applies. 1 Kings 2, 10 through 12 and 3, 3 through 14. Then David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. He had reigned 40 years over Israel, seven years in Hebron, and 33 in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his rule was firmly established. Solomon showed his love for the Lord by walking according to the instructions given him by his father David, except that he offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places. The king went to Gibeon, and yes, that's Gibeon, not Gideon. I messed it up a million times practicing, to offer sacrifices, for that was the most important high place, and Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God asked, God said, excuse me, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Can you imagine? If God appeared to you and said, ask for whatever you want me to give you, Solomon's answer is even more surprising. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord, my God, You have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, 
nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice. I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor, so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among kings. And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands as David your father did, I will give you a long life. You can't outgive God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now, I can't help this. That's, that's beautiful scripture, and I'm going to preach on it for just a moment, but I can't help this. I forgot to mention this during the celebrations. Friday, I had lunch at Perkins, and you had to wait for a while, and so I'm sitting there. And I'm next to this couple, and they've got like this five-year-old little girl, and she gets all excited about, you know, she can whistle, and so, you know, she gets my attention, and, hey, I can whistle, you know, listen to this. And so she whistles a little phrase, and so then I whistle that same phrase back to her. And then she smiles, and she whistles something else, and I'm whistling it back, and we go back and forth. You remember seeing that movie? <laughs> you remember seeing that movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? <laughs> you know, where the, the, the aliens are, and then the computers? That's, that's kind of what that was like. Anyway, that was a celebration that I just thought I'd pass along to you. Now I'm going to get into my sermon here just a little bit. A little more about my transistor radio that I was talking about last Sunday. 52 years ago today, and other days, I was riding my bicycle on County Road 26 in Elkhart County, and it was down the street from WCMR. It's WFRN today, but I was listening to WLS, and I like to drop Larry Lujak's name periodically, just uh, because people recognize it, all right? And so I'm listening to that, but the WCMR station was kind of competing with that, that uh, frequency, that tone, you know? And so I had to tune in to get it a little better. One of the lessons you learn in life through the analogy of the transistor radio is that even though the station is broadcasting in full power, and even though it really, really, really wants to get your ears, if only to send you, you know, the advertising, still, you have to, like, do something. You have to, like, tune in to it. you got to turn the radio on. you got to, like, tune in to the station. There's something that we have to respond to in order to get it and to hear it. The analogy is applicable in school. You know, you have to be open-minded, you have to prepare yourself to receive the information, and you have to really pay attention or tune in to understand the teacher. It's like a job application. You gotta like focus in on what you're doing in order to like learn how to do it right. Turning on and tuning in at that time period had other, um, you know, meanings, but for the purposes of this message, I stayed away from the more psychedelic applicabilities, turning on and tuning in. Those of you that are of my age, you know, you get it. Like fine-tuning, there is a term that is in contemporary psychological profession that is the equivalent of behavior modification, and it is known as redirection. Pretty much it means the same thing. It's just that behavior modification sounds kind of manipulative, whereas redirection just kind of sounds like, you know, you're, you're being helpful. But that redirection, that pivoting, is what God did with Solomon in our scripture today. In our scripture today, we will see that God intervenes in a miraculous manner so as to fine-tune and redirect Solomon and then shepherd him toward a more faithful behavior, a more pure leadership, to be an example of what God wants each and one of, every one of us to be. We find Solomon worshiping at the high places. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father, only or except 
He sacrificed and offered in incense at the high places in Gibeon. So anyway, the phrase caught me. Only, or except, he sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. And so I checked many verses, and they pretty much mean that. It appears that these high places are the traditional places of sacrifice for other peoples, to other gods, long before Solomon and his people arrived. These high places had become very traditional for the local folk and had become the customary place to go. And so let's not pick on Solomon too much, you know, because, you know, it's like cultural change, you know. There once was a day nobody worked on Sunday because nothing was open on Sunday, and now look, you know, and, and you may have to work as a waiter or, you know, retail or something. So let's not pick on Solomon too much. But also, let's not give Solomon too much room either. Solomon knew his way around the Torah. He remembered Moses. Let's see what Moses had to say about worshiping. You must demolish completely all the places where the nations whom you are about to dispossess serve their gods on the mountain heights, on the hills and every leafy tree. Break down their altars, smash their pillars and their sacred poles. And it goes on and on and on. Did Solomon do that? No, he was right there at the high places of these other gods and he was kind of offering stuff there. I needed to set that for you. That Solomon was aware he was not supposed to be doing what he was not supposed to do. Anyway, in many of your Bibles, that section, you know, the high places is kind of headed. Uh, pagan shrines are to be de destroyed. Solomon was not to worship there where other gods had been worshipped. Yet, there he was, setting a royal example for everybody else to see. I imagine this prompted the attention of God, don't you? And God intervened. He intervened to fine-tune Solomon, to redirect and shepherd Solomon toward holiness. Yeah, I'm getting to us later on about this, okay? But at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I should give you. Again, Solomon wasn't really, you know, a bad guy for failing to follow Moses on this discussion of word worship. He had some truly holy qualities about him, as we shall see. You know, and Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, righteousness. And so, give, you know, you've given him a son to sit on the throne. Not only does Solomon acknowledge God in his previous grace toward Solomon's father, but per perhaps also acknowledges God's mercy toward David in his, well, you know what God would have to forgive David for. You know that story pretty well. And now, O oh Lord, you have made your servant king in place of my father, and though I am like a child, I don't know how to come in and go out. Basically, at the time that, you know, that would have been written, that would have been talking about protocol, state protocol, you know, like, you know, like what sorts of things and how to be, behave and everything. And your servant is in the midst of a people you've chosen, a great people so numerous that they cannot be numbered. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people. For who can govern this great people? And so Solomon requests a gift that is for the people beyond himself, a purpose bigger than himself, and ultimately in service to his God. And so the question is prompted to me, Molly, Ruth, you. Imagine if a magic genie popped out of something like a lamp and offered you a three wishes, what would you choose? How would you go about deciding what to choose? Money? Money's always good, isn't it? You know those people that say money can't buy happiness? 
And then the response is, can I try that? So if money is going to be what you choose, don't forget the IRS's share. Don't forget the state's share. But of course, you will discover that you have far, far more friends than ever you thought happened before. What about fame? Do you want fame to be somebody important? Would you be good with stalkers and paparazzi chasing you around? Cameras on motorcycles chasing you through the streets of St. Joseph County. How about power? You get all this power, and then you know, you know, you're up there, and uh, you know, you're the target. Then, you know, you're the one that people want to bring down. You become the enemy. Our scripture indicates that Solomon, when prompted, ask what I should give you, responded with a request for non-selfish things. And at the age of almost, at the age of sixty-six. Sydney time, I have learned that, you know, having things that everybody else wants can place you in a lot of danger. Ask for those things that, like, n nobody, you know, cares about. And so he asked for wisdom because he cares about it. He, go he knows God cares about it. And God is much more powerful than a genie in a bottle, Right? For what would you ask God? Who do you serve? Every Sunday we make the pledge, Lord, your will be done as it is in heaven. It pleased the Lord that Solomon asked this and said, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself a long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for understanding, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind like nobody else before you ever. Notice that there is an interaction here. There was a transaction between God and Solomon. God made an offer. Solomon accepted. Surely it is God that takes the initiative when intervening in our personal lives. And again, I call it provenient grace. But we must be tuned in if we are to even know that God is talking. We must be open to God redirecting our paths if he is to shepherd us to these new heights of holiness. Please note that when God begins this discussion, when God intervenes, he does not reprimand Solomon for sacrificing at the high places as was forbidden by Moses. God does not come on like an angry, vengeful, fire and brimstone kind of stereotypical something or other from the 20th century. God makes Solomon an offer he couldn't refuse to mix some metaphors here. God continues to walk with Solomon. He continues to bless Solomon and gift Solomon even in that very place that Solomon was not to be. Even in the midst of Solomon being outside of the law, yes, God lovingly walks with us while yet we were sinners, as the scripture says. Let me describe the rightful biblical place that Solomon was to be worshiping. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, there's this whole story I could preach about. But as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised David in her heart. There's a bigger story there. But they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. The city of David was the beginnings of what was to become Jerusalem. That was indeed the rightful place for Solomon to have been. He wasn't there. He was someplace else. I think he was just kind of getting along politically with the other people of the area. He came to Jerusalem where he stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. He offered up burnt offerings and such. 
Solomon's behavior had been successfully modified or redirected by God, all without God having to perform some plague or some revenge or some punishment. God changed Solomon's heart with a gift, the gift of wisdom. But wait, there's more. I give you also what you have not asked for, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you, and I will lengthen your life. And so I'll drop a name on you, okay? Not in everything, but in some things. Like Joel Osteen, I truly believe that God wants to bless you and make gift to you. Evidence of it is found in Solomon's case and in Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do good so you will live in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and trust in him and he will act. He will make your vindication shine like light and the justice of your cause like the noonday. He will give you the desires of your heart. He will deliver you from your own personal Gibeon to your own personal Jerusalem, just as he had done for Solomon. And so, what is it that you wish for, that you ask God for? God showed up to transform Solomon toward holiness in the very place that Solomon was not to be. God accepts us where we are. Solomon was otherwise pretty holy, even though he had no excuse to be where he was. And even though we Christians saved are pretty holy ourselves, we too, in our hearts, may be someplace that we're not supposed to be. Envy, anger, refusal to forgive, Perhaps even refusal to forgive ourselves. You ever fall into that situation where you know decades ago you did something wrong, you said something wrong, but, you know, you just can't let yourself move on from that? You need to learn how to forgive yourself as well. Perhaps when God asks what we might request, we may say, deliver me from this Gibeon, that I have placed myself in. And the Lord will be faithful to do so. While it is true that we may need God's help and further yet true that God really, really does all the work, we must at the very least tune in to hearing God. The better the frequency, the clearer the sound. The discussion here in 2 Samuel that God has with Solomon took place in a dream. I've never had a vision like that in a dream. I've never had uh, an Apostle Paul, you know, Damascus Road experience. The way God speaks to me is, you know, I read scripture and I have an indication and then I try my will and I try my will and it fails and finally I say, <sighs> okay, God, I'll do it your way. That's how God gets to me, okay? You remember that I was talking about the radio station WCMR just down the street from me, and, and um, it had the tendency to overwhelm the WLS station. That's very much what happens that I have to take care of in my own signal because very, very often the best way for me to hear God's signal that he's broadcasting is for me to turn back and dial down mine, in order for me to hear what God has to say, I kind of have to, like, take time to shut up. I know you're all thinking that. Thank you. That's what a Sabbath is for. A Sabbath is so that you can, like, have an excuse to, like, just relax and pay attention to God. You deserve it. I know today's not going to be much of a Sabbath, but but you deserve a Sabbath so that God can rejuvenate you. In order to hear God's word, in order to hear what God has for us, we kind of do have to like settle in and tone down and tune into him a little bit. And even at that, 
you know, it is the work of God that works in us. And so let us pray for a moment. Our Lord, indeed, we do wish to hear your word. We wish to hear what you would have for us to do next. We think that we've got it figured out, Lord, because we've been raised to plan and to schedule and to think things through, and, and we think we know what's around the corner, but we don't. You know what's around the corner. And so, Lord, overwhelm our will We surrender our will to you. We open our ears to you, Lord. We soften our hearts to you. Shepherd us, redirect us, give us what you would have us to have, not for selfish purposes, but that we may serve you. And we know, Lord, that you will transform us into shining examples like Solomon was. And so, Lord, your glory be done, we pray. In your precious name, amen. Please stand as we sing our closing song that's also a benediction, which is called Draw the Circle Wide. the Granger Good Shepherd service, they have a brief um, administrative council meeting to figure out what they're going to do about their annual bazaar craft show. And so I'll be there for that, but I'm going to hasten back here to have a sloppy joe and join you all with this afternoon's festivities. You at home, if you don't have anything to do this afternoon, Come on over to Mishawaka, Willow Creek, United Methodist Church from 1 to 5. Have a hot dog with me or something. The Lord has blessed you. The Lord is going to cause His glory to shine upon your face such that you're going to walk out into the world and greet those people this afternoon and you're going to shine so brightly in your heart and upon your face. People are going to say, What's up? I leave you in peace.